been doing these barbershop tours since 03. And it's really enlightening to hear individuals start to change their political direction. I think it's time that blacks in, in, uh, in general need to boost our political IQ. Stop being blindly faithful to a one party system that doesn't work for us. So uh, I've always liked Donald Trump. You know, he was an icon for years in our community. And all of a sudden now he's this big uh, clans. What changed? I think the uh, I think the powers that be saw the, his potential in our community. It's if somebody the Republicans started to come and really communicate in, the, in these communities, they'll come to barbershops and they'll start to see. We talk in the same language, mm -hmm. but they don't have, they don't, they don't know how to communicate. So they'd rather not do it. So Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I do feel like that is true, but I don't think the reasoning as to why Republicans, uh, don't typically go to, you know, uh, uh, deeply Democrat or, you know, mainly black areas is because of the lack of communication. Maybe that's a small piece of it, but I think most of it is black people have been loyal at a 90% clip, over 90% clip to the Democrat party. So if if we're talking the, you know, using your resources wisely, using your campaign funds wisely, it's probably not wise to go to a black area where you're not really gonna get a whole lot of support, you know, in the past. Now, Trump has changed that, because people are realizing, yo, we speak the same language. A lot of the stuff Trump says, we all say in private, right? We, we all have the same types of conversations. So it is great to see that people are waking up. But on that note, I want to talk about the trip that Trump took to a barbershop. And that's what uh, uh, Lawrence Jones was about to ask Trump. You know, are you going to go and talk to people, uh, you know, at the at these barbershops he says that you got to directly communicate to the voters will you be on the ground at barbershops local communities talking about the issues that matter to them and i am going to be doing that and he's a man of his word he is absolutely a man of his word trump took a trip to not kentucky not ohio not tennessee right no 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 deep red place right no no place where he's gonna win easily where he has thousands upon thousands of millions of you know supporters no 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 trump didn't take the easy trip trump took a trip to the bronx deep blue bronx yeah and this is how he arrived let's dive in <laughs> is that's why you see them pulling the uh curtain there <laughs> one of the secret service agents fell it happens to the best of us snipers on the roof they ain't playing So yeah, that is uh, him arriving. Obviously, they cordoned off the area, blocked off the street. Like that was literally in the middle of the street uh, and, you know, had a whole tent there. So when he arrived, his vehicle was hidden. You couldn't see. Obviously, we all know that that was his vehicle that pulled into the tent. It was the only vehicle that actually drove into the tent. No, actually, I lied. There was a vehicle before his that drove through it to the front side but his is the only one that stopped inside the tent and then they closed it, right? So obviously it was him, but for security purposes, didn't want him walking out in the open considering what has already happened to this man um, twice already. 
right? So uh, smart, smart entrance. But this is him actually walking into the barbershop uh, after walking through the tent. Check it out. You know, one thing that I always love, and once Trump becomes president, I can't wait to have this moment. And Joe Rogan actually talked about this once, but Trump always shakes people's hands, and he does like that pool. <laughs> he does like that pool. And Joe Rogan talked about, you know, how, you know, he's acknowledged that Trump does the pool. And the first time he met Trump, like he anchored himself. He was like, he's not getting me today. He was like, no, I anchored myself. I went in, he tried it. But he was like, there was one time where he got me though. You know, he made me reach for the handshake and he did the yank. It's absolutely hilarious. I, I can't wait to have that moment with Trump. I, I, I'm going to anchor myself too, like Joe Rogan. So I ain't getting those. <laughs> and he shakes everybody's hand like that. It's not like a, you know, this person or that person like he literally shakes everybody's hand like that like the <laughs> and trump's not a little guy right trump's what six one six two you know um not 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 a, not a little fella so you know that 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 tug can really you know if you're not anchored can can really knock you off your balance a little bit uh but here's uh some of that conversation as well that they were having in the barbershop check it out your energy bill from january 20th if i went we gotta win if we yeah. win, oh, oh, I love this guy. Yeah, we got to make America great again. Absolutely, absolutely. Also, I want to show you guys this because one of the barbers in the barber shop, I believe this is uh, the owner of the shop, if I am correct. I might be wrong on this. I believe it is. Um, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name here. I'll put his Instagram on the screen. Uh, it's this right here. I believe that's the gentleman's Instagram right there. Uh, well, he recorded part of the interaction and I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it goes on for like 30 minutes. We ain't about to sit here for no 30 minutes. All right. I'm going to get y'all out of here a lot sooner than that. But, uh, here is part of the conversation. Hey, the taxi ended up losing the phone. In I think it's 82% of the cases, the parents leave the farm to the kid or leave like a business, lose a good business, leave the business to the kids and they end up losing it because they get, you know, the banks have to loan money and they end up losing it. Uh, there's no inheritance tax. I, I got that done. But Mr. President, will there be, so you already passed tax cuts in the they last They want to end them. Will there be an additional yes. tax cut? Oh yeah, we're cutting them further, you saw that because we're using what's underground. We're using our wealth. Again, energy is so big. Also in terms of making money, these big companies among the biggest are the energy companies. We have more oil and gas under our feet than any other country in the world. And we don't use it. We're gonna start using it. You know, we have a place, Anwar in Alaska. It's bigger than Saudi Arabia, they say, whatever. It's as big, just about. Saudi Arabia is, giant this is giant ronald reagan wanted to do it and yeah i think that's a great idea right um you know instead of taxing continuing to tax the crap out of the american citizen use some of our resources to cover the cost of whatever we are our bills basically right while also you know uh having somebody like elon come in and you know cut a lot of the waste right Cut a huge portion because Elon, when Elon bought X, he fired 80% of the employees and X didn't even blink, right? It, it was almost like it didn't even happen. I mean, you would think if you, if you bought a company 
and you go in and you fire 80 percent of the people that work there like things would go haywire no nothing happened which lets you know that there was a lot of wasted money in that company a whole lot of wasted money you're you're paying 80 percent of the people there to do absolutely nothing because you don't need them and it, the proof is in the pudding right it's running completely fine if not better than it was before so it, i think we we could do that same exact thing with the government and it'll run perfect as a matter of fact I, some would argue it will run even better right um because you don't have so much clogging and the, the bureaucracy of it all, you know, like th th there's, there's not so much red tape to try to, oh, you got to talk to this person, talk to that person and this person and that person. And these two, you know, places are doing the same thing and that's overlapping. So like they were doing something and they were doing something, but it's overlapping with the both. And now, you know, like it's, it's just a whole jumbled mess. Uh, and I think Elon actually talked about that, but then also, um, you know, cleaning up these uh, bills that go through Congress, right? Uh, and that's one thing I've learned, like they'll label a bill something, but then they'll be like, you know, they'll label a bill like checks for American citizens. Right. But then if you read the bill itself, first off, it's like 100 pages. Why does it why does it need to be 100 pages if it's just checks for Americans? It's because it's a lot of um, spending money outside of that within these bills. And it'll be like, I don't know, 70 billion to, you know, Venezuela for border security. Right. It'll be like some crap like that in it, amongst a lot of other stuff that if you ask the American citizens, hey, do you want to spend your money on this? Absolutely not. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't help out, you know, anywhere. But if you read these bills, it's just like ridiculous how much money we're spending in other places. But I want to get into uh, this clip here of the people outside of the barbershop in the deep blue Bronx. Check it out. in the city, yeah. one of the this truest and the real. realest president that we ever had and we will have again. He's uh -huh. the one maker changer, he's the money maker. He's gonna change the economy for the Tell better. He's here for the people, yeah. not for the equals. That's we all right. equal as That's one. Right. And he's here to make that change. And oh, trust yeah. me, best believe, he's gonna make a change. Yeah. Cause we are here to support Trump. That's why we are here in Castle Hill today. We, to make it happen for Trump, baby, stronger. let's go Trump. Yo, Trump is the real president. Up, but let's go Trump! Let's go Trump! Now, remember, this is Deep Blue Bronx. Now, obviously, um, there probably are, as a matter of fact, I, there is a part of this clip where, uh, here it is. Check out this part. <laughs> this is what I expect the entire crowd to be like in the Bronx. Eat my nuts. Eat my nuts. Eat my nuts. Fuck you, Trump. That's what I expect the entire crowd to be like. There's one person out there saying stuff like that. Now, I'm sure there's more people that feel that way. Uh, but the fact that Trump can go into a deep blue area like the Bronx and receive love and, and, and support, I think says a lot. Says a whole, whole lot. Uh, Kamala can't pull up to a deep red area and the same thing happen. It's just not happening. But Trump can pull up to deep blue areas and... Most of the people love him. Just saying. Is this big for you? What's, what's going on now? Is this a big moment? Big day for you in yeah. English? Yes, it's a big, big moment for me. How do you feel, though, Asana? Yeah. Good. An honor for I, you. I, I'm nervous, too. Nervous? Yeah. <laughs> Very well. What makes you feel nervous about meeting the former president? Uh, for, this is my first time. A lot of security. Yeah. This is my first time to close the president, you know. Looking forward to shaking his hand. Yeah. What would you say to him? What do I see? Bueno, lo que me llega a la mente es un gusto en conocerlo. 
porque eso lo, tú sabes, es, es algo diferente para mí. <laughs> so I believe that's one of the barbers um, that works in the, the uh, barber shop there. And I love that shirt. Um, make barbers great again. <laughs> make barbers great again, baby. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, yeah, Trump pulling up to a deep blue area and mostly receiving love and support. Like I said, I expected most of the crowd or you would expect most of the crowd to be like that guy that was saying, suck my nuts, you know, F Trump. Like you would expect most of the crowd to be like that. This is deep blue. These folks don't vote for Trump typically, right? This is deep blue area. All the people in this area. Um, but I think this time around, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not saying the Bronx will go red or anything like that, but it'll be redder than it's been in a very, very long time, I suspect. But what do you think? Let me know. Peace and love. I'm out.